we have been pleased to host regular one hour conversations with you and the healthcare professionals at the Vermont Department of Health during much of the COVID-19 pandemic. Last week's conversation generated many questions and requests for clarification. I'm joined again today by Katie Leffel and Molly McClintock, both nurses at the Vermont Department of Health for a follow-up conversation. We hope to spend the next few minutes highlighting some key points. Katie, can you get us started? Sure. So the past few weeks have been difficult and filled with frequent change. Perhaps the most difficult thing that we've asked you to do is shift the way you think about COVID. For almost two years now, we've been focused on being cautious and doing everything humanly possible to keep COVID out, out of our programs. COVID was scary and affected every aspect of our lives. There was massive disruption to the way our world operated. Now we're pivoting towards beginning to think of the endemic world and asking you to change the way that you, you think as well. We're asking you to accept that COVID infections will happen. We're asking you to let go of the fear and become comfortable with having more COVID exposures and infections. But we've all been so scared for so long and it takes time to readjust and become more comfortable with exposures and infection. This is a big ask and it isn't something that happens overnight. This is a process that's not easy, but it is something we all need to work together to accomplish. Let's talk about perceived inconsistencies. So we want to acknowledge that sometimes it seems like what Test for Tots says and what the Vermont Department of Health says don't seem perfectly aligned. It can be confusing to read the close contact guidelines from the Department of Health that say a child has to quarantine and then read Test for Tots and see the child can actually come into your program. How do you choose what to follow? It's important to remember that these two sites are speaking to different issues. If you're looking at Department of Health, you're looking at guidance for the general population. And if you don't do test for tots, that is exactly what you should be following. Test for tots, on the other hand, is a way to keep kids in childcare when they would otherwise have to quarantine. These aren't inconsistencies or oversights, they're intentional decisions to address the needs of our youngest citizens. Thank you. So where are we safest? So there are three main places that children are exposed to COVID in their home, in the community, and in childcare or school. The place where they're least apt to be exposed, however, is childcare or school. At home, there's continuous exposure, and in the community and among friends, we often relax our guards. However, early childhood educators have done a wonderful job of following the guidance and reducing risk. We know that as providers, this doesn't erase the fear of spread within your program, but we wanna recognize that childcare is among the safest of environments. help us understand the shift to antigen testing. For most of the pandemic, we've really prioritized PCR testing. And at the beginning of the pandemic, we even discouraged the use of antigen tests. So it can be confusing that these are now considered a viable alternative to a PCR test, and in some cases, more desirable. However, during a surge and in, wide commun in widespread community outbreak, PCR are not as helpful as antigen tests because of the delay in results. We currently need a tool to let us know if we are contagious right now. We use antigen tests for test for tots as it allows us to see each day in real time if a child is infectious and at risk for transmitting COVID to others. PCR tests are helpful in some cases, but to keep kids in childcare and staff able to work, it's important to be able to see these results in real time and not have to wait a few days for results. What about masking? We want to reassure you that the Department of Health supports the Test for Tots guidelines. The Health Department website recommends masking around others through day 10. However, the developmental ability of eight children ages two to five years and their ability to mask consistently also needed to be taken into consideration. We all know children have difficulty wearing masks correctly all the time, but we also know it is important to keep children in childcare for a variety of reasons, like consistency and socialization and learning. So our goals need to be reducing barriers for childcare attendance. Although this age group isn't perfect at masking, we also know that doing their best is okay. And we just wanted to take a moment to thank you for the work you do. Caring for and educating young children is not an easy task in the best of times, and you all are doing it in the middle of a pandemic. The resilience, grace, and commitment to the families you work with has truly been an inspiration. When you're discouraged, please know the work you are doing is seen, and we are all so grateful for your passion. 
Thank you so much for joining me again, Katie and Molly. And thank you for speaking directly to Vermont's early childhood community. We all want the best for each other and our children.